Hi, my name is Mark Bain. I'm an assistant scientist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, uh, and I work in the Department of Geology and Geophysics. One of the, the major questions um, in Greenland is that in the summer times, um, melting occurs, and that makes uh, these lakes form on the surface of the ice sheet. So the lakes are, tend to be a couple um, miles wide, and they tend to be um, maybe 50 to 60 feet deep at the center. And those are the larger ones, and then you see you know, smaller ones as well. One of the amazing things is when you fly over the ice sheet in a helicopter, you see lakes out, you know, just all over the place out the window. There are hundreds of them all on the surface of the ice sheet. The lakes tend to fill up during the summer months, starting in June and filling through sometime in July or August. And then all of a sudden they seem to drain very rapidly um, in the course of just several hours, actually. And so one of the big questions is how that drainage process works. And one of the hypotheses that we had is that it basically occurs by a crack forming in the surface of the ice sheet and then the water from the lake filling the crack and basically driving that crack down to the base of the ice sheet. So in, in these cases, the ice is about a kilometer thick and you appear to transport all of the water from the lake down to the base in, in about an hour. The portion of the project that I've been most involved in is putting out a network of seismometers um, around the lakes. And what the seismometers do is they basically measure um, shaking of the earth um, associated with earthquakes. So seismometers are how we measure earthquakes, say, on the San Andreas Fault in California. Um, and we can do a very similar thing with um, earthquakes and ice, or what we call ice quakes. Um, and one of the particular processes that we're trying to, use, to capture with the seismometers is how the cracks under these lakes propagate. We want to basically capture the propagation and initiation of one of these cracks under the lake. Um, so last summer we uh, put out a series of seismometers around each of the lakes that we're monitoring and this summer we'll go back and we'll collect the data from those seismometers. So this year we'll be getting all of the data off of our our seismometers and so one of the big things that we're going to be trying to do is to locate um, these ice quakes or essentially determine where they occurred both in space and in time and to see how they correspond to um, both the drainage of the lake and also to the movement of the ice sheet that we're recording with the GPS um, receivers that we put out. And so it's basically trying to take all of this data and analyze it in an integrated fashion and see if we can identify the crack itself, where it formed, and then how, that, how long it took that crack to drain the ice sheet, and then how the ice sheet itself responds to that drainage. The ice surface itself is very um, rough, and in particular the, the biggest obstacle are these holes in the surface of the ice, they're called cryoconites, and they can range anything from actually being like about a centimeter wide to being um, several meters across. And they form because dust gets blown in onto the surface of the ice sheet, and the dust is dark, and so when the sun hits it, it heats up the dark material faster than the light material. And that material then melts its way down into the ice sheet. And they form these beautifully um, round holes in the ice, which tend to be just about the right size to, that you can step in. And they're just deep enough so they go right over the top of your boot and you get your foot soaked. So, so that's kind of the biggest just obstacle walking around. You're always trying to make sure you don't step in, in these things. This podcast was produced by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution with funding from the National Science Foundation. For more information, visit us on the web at polardiscovery.whoi.edu.